there? I'm Kay Byfield, and this is your Art Speak Studio Moment. I'm filming this at Art Speak Studio in Dallas, Texas, where we offer online classes and in-studio classes, particularly in watercolor. And today I'm going to talk about gray, because gray is very important to the success of painting. We use neutrals like gray and brown to be in contrast with bright colors and make them look brighter. And they also create a mood. Without neutrals, we would be playing with only one note, which is all bright. It would be like playing the piano with only major keys and no minor keys. We will find that compositions tend to either be predominantly in the major key or predominantly in the minor key, but there are always introductions of the other key, major or minor, to the composition as well. The same is true in visual art. They will either be predominantly neutral, like the painting on the left, or they will be predominantly bright, like the painting on the right. But there will always be a contrast with some of the opposite in order to create a focal point and an area that is special in the painting. When you apply your neutrals, you want to apply them so there's some variety in them, so you create a sense of specialness and interest in your painting. Of course, you could always just lose two grays like Payne's Gray and Davies Gray and the others that you find on the market. But what tends to happen is they go really flat and are very predictable. It works a lot better if you mix your grays yourself. Combining any three primaries, red, yellow, and blue, will give you a gray or a brown. But the variety in the grays and browns will depend upon how much water you use and how much of each of those primary colors you use. When you mix them, be sure that you don't over mix your paints because that will make them look flat and dull. You want to let different colors separate on the paper or pop in some other color while the paint is still wet. My goal as an artist is to avoid using tube colors as much as possible or, or colors that I've pre-mixed in the palette and just apply to have a lot of variety in my paint so the painting will be interesting. Let me show you the approaches that I take. Here are some uh, grays that I have already mixed. This is Payne's Gray, fresh out of the tube. All I did was take it out of the well, add some water to it, and apply it to the paper. Here's Davies Gray, which is another tube gray that I happen to have, and it doesn't get much darker than this. The Payne's Gray would get much darker if I used less water and more pigment. But then I mixed in my palette Cerulean Blue with Cadmium Red, which is one of my go-to grays, and I don't know if you can see it as well on the camera, but it has a tendency to separate so you can see a little bit of the red bouncing back and a little of the blue, but it reads as a gray. Another go-to gray that I use a lot is Thalo Green and Alizarin Crimson. Again, the red and the green tend to separate just a little bit and it creates more interest even if you've got a large shape that's gray. This premixed gray is cobalt blue with cadmium red and it, it tends to be to the purple side this time because I probably used a bit more cadmium red than I did the blue. Here's cerulean blue with cadmium scarlet which is the orange that I the bright orange that I use on my palette and it's very similar to the cerulean blue and cadmium red because the colors are similar, but yet it is still different. Here's cobalt blue and cadmium scarlet. So instead of cerulean blue, I used cobalt blue and I got a different kind of, uh, of a gray. Here's ultramarine blue and cadmium scarlet which tends to be similar to the phthalo green and alizarin crimson. 
in this case, it would it would be different somewhat if there were more water or more of one or the other pigment. Here's another example, Windsor blue, cadmium red, and cadmium yellow. Again, red, yellow, and blue together. In this case, I'm using a blue, a red, and a yellow. In all of those cases, I was using an orangey red or an orange, which is yellow and red. Both of those are have yellow and red in them, and some blue. And the blue could be either to the red side or to the yellow side. But when you put them together, you get a gray. And the kind of gray you get depends upon how much red, yellow, how much red, and how much blue there is. These combinations are infinite. You can do any number of com combinations because the quantity of each pigment that you're using and the amount of water that you're using will change the resulting color. Here's ultramarine blue, raw sienna, and cadmium red. It tends to be a little bit to the browner, but if I added more blue, it would be less brown. And again, browns and grays are neutral. One of the things I recommend you try is to mix the paints on the paper rather than pick, mixing them completely in the palette and then see what the gray that you get turns out to be. So here's cobalt blue, and I'm gonna put it on the paper. And while it's still wet, I'm going to add cadmium red because these will make a nice gray. I'm going to add a little bit more cobalt blue. It needs more blue to read as gray. Okay, when I first mix it, it may not look like it's really a gray, but when it has a chance to dry, it will be much more gray, but you will see that separation in the colors. And here's another example. This time, I'm going to mix cadmium scarlet and ultramarine blue. So just for fun, I'm putting the cadmium scarlet on first. Like I said, that's an orange. There's lots of different oranges, of course, but I like this one. And now I'm going to add ultramarine blue to that. Okay, so now these are dry. And I want you to notice this is cobalt blue and cadmium red, which is the same as this one over here, cobalt blue and cadmium red. But this is more interesting. It's also a little bit darker because I probably used less water. But it's more interesting because you can see some of the red and the blue shining through, but it reads as a gray. And here's ultramarine blue and cadmium scarlet, which is the same as this color here that I mixed in the palette, but it's a lot more interesting because it's separating somewhat. Now, when you put it on the paper, you could scrub it and scrub it so much that it will end up looking like that. But I like that variety, that shine to it that you can get. And these neutrals are interesting. They will make your brights look bright because they'll be next to them. And you will end up with a painting that's really special no matter where you look on the painting surface. Here's the other thing that I sometimes do with grays. This is my go-to gray, one of my go-to grays, cobalt blue and cadmium red. And I sometimes, while it's still wet, drop other colors in just to create some variety so that it'll still read as gray, but it just, no one would be able to say what colors those originally were. And so I've mixed it up, but then I dropped in some cobalt turquoise and a little bit of um, pink 
And so it still reads as gray, but it doesn't really look like something you could just say, oh, she used cobalt blue and uh, cadmium red. Now I'm going to do cobalt turquoise and cadmium red. And I'm going to drop in a little bit of Holbein Permanent Violet. Takes it to kind of a purple color. Then I'm going to drop in some more red. Still a gray, but a much more interesting gray because I've added some other colors in it while it was still wet. And then those will mix to come up with a different color when it's finally dry. The number of grays you can mix is unlimited when you vary the reds, yellows, and blues that you use, and especially if you drop in other colors before the paint dries. You can also go back and add another uh, layer over the paint once it is dry, and that will change the resulting color. So there's any number of ways that you can go about this. But having interesting grays along with your colors will make a huge difference in the way that your paintings work. One of my big problems is when I do a demonstration, inevitably people in the audience say, what color are you using? I don't really know what color I'm using because it's whatever's already in the palette. Or if I say, gee, that needs to be a little bluer or that needs to be a little bit more red, I'm likely to reach for any red or blue based on whether I want the color to be duller or brighter. And so I don't typically apply paints just out of the palette. I hope this introduction to the ways that you can create interesting grays will be helpful to you. And we'll see you again at another Art Speak Studio moment. Bye.